so uh, what do I mean by free? There's, uh, the word free in English has kind of got two, it's kind of one word that means two different things. Um, gratis and libra are kind of the, the two words used by other languages. Um, so just to explain that, gratis means like, free is in, free beer, like I give you something for free. Coming to this bar camp is free, uh, didn't cost you anything. Uh, so without cost of labor. Um, so the, uh, the other word is um, legal, which is, means free as in freedom, uh, so not only power of control, um, and also free as in free speech. So just to kind of um, map that up, uh, and, and liber liberation, liberty, the state being free, having free, but freedom of liberty. Um, so freedom to use, um, so free, free software is the, having the freedom to use uh, the software for any purpose. Um, and to be able, being able to study how the program works and change it to you according to your needs, uh, which you do get with some software, you don't get with others, um, as you, you, you may or may not know. Uh, you also have the freedom to distribute the software, so you can put it on a disk and send it to somebody or let them download it from a, from a website and pass it around and even pass around your uh, improved versions and modifications and pass them and let other people use whatever you've written to make the software better if it'll benefit somebody else. Uh, open source software is uh, where the source code is uh, openly available. Uh, you have the uh, freedom to distribute again uh, and redistribute that software. The source code is modifiable and uh, project forks are available. So you could, you could have one project here and then that could be one piece of software which does something or that it was designed to do and then it can sort of, somebody can say, well actually we're going to take this in a different direction and fork it off and make something on the basis of that that does something uh, slightly different. Uh, that's not along the same path. Um, so why? Uh, one of the things uh, Linus, uh, Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, says is that given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. So he means that if enough people can look at the code and see it, see what it does and how it works and use it, uh, there won't, there, you know, there generally won't be a problem with bugs because there'll be, uh, you know, with enough people uh, having a look at it and having, having a go. Uh, it's it, they're more likely to overcome the problems in the software. Um, now this is another thing I found, uh, which was uh, from Red Hat. Um, they said, uh, imagine if all past knowledge was kept hidden, or its use was restricted to only those who were willing to pay for it. And they're saying how, how this sort of thing will suffer. Uh, if, if nobody was allowed to, um, have a, you know, if, if everything had to be original thought, we wouldn't be anywhere. You know, that's the quote, standing on the shoulders of giants. Um, you know, if we if we weren't allowed to pass on knowledge, and, and, and if, if, if that just couldn't happen, we wouldn't be able to get anywhere. Uh, if everything had to be your brand new patented invention, we, you, you, it, all those even all those patents are based on the things scientists discovered uh, hundreds and thousands of years ago. So we really need to be able to sort of have a, a kind of a trust of the community and be able to pass pass and share ideas. So uh, how do we how do we accomplish this? How do you make some software? And um, distribute it, make it available, make people um, available to to contribute towards it. Um, you can use version control software, something that David mentioned in his talk. So there's uh, CVS, SVN, Git is a very popular one, um, and uh, and Mercurial. That means that you can um, keep pro keep track of the progress of the software as you as you add new features, it all gets tracked. You can rewind back to the previous states. People can. Uh, if you've got somebody contributing on it and you didn't have any version control, they could completely break it by mistake or add a, add a bug or uh, destroy a feature that they didn't, they didn't know was there. And you wouldn't have a clue how to get back to it. You might just have to say, now I have to ignore all, all your contributions um, because you've affected something I did last, uh, last time. Uh, so keeping it in version control really helps manage that. And there's a lot of other tools. So you can have uh, online repositories, which is GitHub, you've probably heard of. Bitbucket, source code is an old one. Um, it means you can host your, your code online. People can just browse it in, in a web browser, browse and uh, have a look around the code, see what they uh, see, what's going on. So look at the forks, look at uh, look at all the revisions. You can see all the way through all the Git history, that sort of thing. See how it's progressed and why why people did what they did, all the issue tracking and that sort of thing. Uh, and also other software development management systems. So just, mostly is this just about communication. If you only had a code base and no, you know, you, you just have like, well, a new, this is a new version, this is version 1.1. Doesn't it, if it didn't tell you what, what the new version did, or what, uh, what features have been added, and what, why they've been added, 
Um, it needs a lot of collaboration, so you might have some people working on one side of something, and other people working on a, a different side, trying to achieve, accomplish the same goal. They really need to be able to communicate. There are companies now that are, are working, that don't have offices, that just work, that, their workers just work, work remotely, um, and they make some amazing stuff. They can't, they don't see each other every day, they, they, keep, they just have to communicate uh, online and use sophisticated book tracking tools and test suites and um, that sort of thing. So test, test suites, that's, uh, if you don't know what that is, it's having tests in place that, that you run on your software to say, this is what the software is supposed to do, and if it passes the tests, it, you're saying that, uh, that it does accomplish that each of those things. And if you leave those in the repository and say, this is the build suite, this is the, these are the tests, uh, if, if you add anything to the code, please add some tests. If you, if you write me any new features, please add, add tests where appropriate. And also make sure that all the old tests are still passing, because that's really important. You don't want to add a new feature, you know, being a contributor and break something somebody else did. Because without any of that, you, you, you wouldn't have any, without any of that communication and, and the uh, management systems, you wouldn't be able to, uh, to make any progress in this sort of thing. So there's so many examples of awesome software that we make, all these projects, um, that have been made possible just because of the open source culture. Um, it's, it's actually how software started. It, it, there was proprietary software was brought in at, at a later date. It, it was always, I'm going to write this thing because I need you know, to be able to check the, um, the status of my printer from, de you know, from upstairs. I'll write this thing uh, that will check the progress and, and send, me, send me the information back. And then, oh well, this is quite useful, so I'll, you know, let somebody else use it. There's no, yeah, there was never any gain to uh, sort of stopping anyone using what you've, what you know, the tools you've written. Um, so the, the culture was, was always there, and it's kind of this this generation, in, in my my generation, has been brought up in an age where software is is, is paid for and it's on disks and you have licenses, uh, uh, license fees and that sort of thing. So uh, all these things wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be possible without without this culture. Um, so uh, here are some awesome use cases. So this is people who, who probably not most of this stuff wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the free software. So you've got things like Wikipedia runs on PHP, which is a, an open source programming language for the web. Uh, you've got Android, which is, which is an open source operating system for mobiles. Uh, Twitter is, you know, uses all sorts of different projects that, that are uh, that are open source. And things like Facebook, like if anyone's seen the social network, the, the movie, um, Mark Zuckerberg, just a student, uh, writing some, um, some website that he's had an idea for, and he thinks, um, right, we're going to get this up, we're going to launch it. Um, and he just just gets a, a Linux server uh, running a sort of LAMP stack, Linux Apache, MySQL, and PHP, and it's, that's all just free software, it's uh, free and open source. Um, He's just able to pick stuff up without any, you know, without, without paying for licenses for, to be able to use the software because it's just being made available. Um, course where you use things like MongoDB. Um, you've also got, as well as all these kind of other open source projects and, and things like the Pi, you've also got what, two um, tech companies in there. Um, just to say that they are making money on um, running business and, and actually providing people solutions to, to things, uh, like using free software, uh, and it's, it's generating business for people, it's not just kind of hobbyists and, and nobody's uh, and startups and things like that, it's, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot more to it. Um, <coughs> uh, the Raspberry Pi, I don't know what that is, it's a small computer that costs 30 pounds, it's a, a quick uh, rundown of what that is. And it's, it, it runs Linux, the, uh, an operating system like based on Linux, and, uh, and you, can, you can do all sorts of things with it. So there's, there's all these new inspirations and uses for that in Raspberry Pi. Um, and they just wouldn't be possible if everything was licensed. But, I mean, the Raspberry Pi is a computer that costs less than the cheapest you know, dis student discount version of a Microsoft operating system. And that's incredible, really, the fact you can do all that stuff just because of all this, um, all this software that's available. Um, this is an example I found recently uh, where a kid had gone into this, uh, you know, spoke into this business who were sort of, they got all these really old computers um, and they, they were saying, you know, they're, they're really slow and they're really sluggish, we can't really get the day-to-day -day office jobs done. Um, 
and we, you know, they were thinking, do, do we have to take a loan out to buy a lot of new computers? We're not really sure how stable business is going to be in the next few years with the recession. You know, they were really struggling. Um, they just couldn't couldn't operate. Uh, you know, to the point they couldn't operate. And he, he just came in, and I don't know whether it was a relation or a, a friend or something, but he came in and said, well, I'll install this software on your computer so it'll run all the uh, baby bills, run all the software you had before, and run your business. Um, and it, you just installed Ubuntu. Um, and they have free uh, open source off uh, office suites and uh, a lot of the accounting software and all that sort of thing. And it runs really well on old hardware because um, it's not cluttered with all this uh, micro stuff. So uh, that was a really cool uh, use case there. Um, NASA have a GitHub account. So GitHub is um, one of the uh, online code repository web interfaces that I uh, mentioned. Uh, so you have a Git, uh, a local web. Uh, Local instance of Git running on your computer and you connect code into your Git repository and then you upload it to, to the world to see. Um, a, a lot of their projects are uh, over here, some really good cool, cool stuff. Um, so I'll well, mention the Raspberry Pi. The community for the Raspberry Pi is amazing. Um, this, is, uh, this is a screenshot of the uh, Pi store, so it's a bit like an app store on the Raspberry Pi. And anyone can submit um, projects into here, you can, you can just you know, have that download um, the same way you would with a, a mobile app. And, all, and you know, at first, like, there, there is, you can actually put paid software on here, but uh, most of the stuff on there is, is free. And all the first, uh, all the people who are committing um, projects to that initially were, were all free. Were free. Um, and the, the whole culture of the Raspberry Pi, um, if you look on that blog, it's all full of interesting projects they found. found. So somebody goes, oh, I've, you know, I plugged in a USB webcam and did this and hooked it up to my uh, super switch and made a CCTV camera. And this is how I did it. I and mean, then people blog about it and say, this is what I did, I had this problem, this happened, I used this bit of code, I found a tutorial here, uh, I brought this piece of uh, you know, cable or something that, that did this, and, and just explain how they did it and share that with the community. And it's what it's all about. It's, um, it's the way, you know, it's, it's literally it's not true. Not at all the truth. Standing on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> um, and the, you actually get the same uh, thing with, uh, with Ubuntu. There's a, uh, so that's a Linux distribution. So it's an alternative to using Windows. And you, um, you have an actual app store. They have a, a repository uh, where you can, um, you can just, there's a list of software that's available. And you can just say, oh, okay, well, there's, um, uh, I, need, I need to be able to write a you know, copy of DVD or write, you know, write something to DVD or I, need, uh, you know, I, I, I want a game or something like that or a, an office suite. You just search it in. Uh, it's time you search it, find something and go, okay, well, we'll try this. And it's just immediately available. You have, you have some software in, in a matter of seconds just by sort of searching and finding what you want, the same way you can on, a, on an app, on an iPhone or an iPhone. Um, and, and it's all kind of free and open source. And, People contribute to these things, and it's a really good. Uh, it's found to be a really good business model. Quite hard to explain to people if you've never heard of this before. Having a business model of just having things available for, <coughs> and asking people to contribute to projects, but it happens. That's the great thing. Um, you get. Um, I mean, if you take a look at um, Microsoft and Carter, if anyone, if anyone remembers that, if when when that came about. They said, right, we're, Microsoft said, right, we're going to make um, uh, Encarta, which is going to be an uh, 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 encyclopedia. Um, and we're going, to, we're going to go and find out you know, a load of academics and pay them to write articles for us. And then we'll distribute that and, you know, with Windows and we'll sort of charge for it. And we can buy it from, from shops on disk. Um, if around that time somebody said, well, they, they did, somebody said, I'm going to set up an encyclopedia and I'm going to ask people to write articles for free. What, you know, what, what would anyone think? Oh, that's a stupid idea, it's not going to work. You can't just, people can't just contribute to articles and write whatever they want. But look at Wikipedia. Anyone who claims that isn't brilliant, just completely deleted. That was, that was uh, rewritten by anyone that put anything in. You can spend an hour as an expert in your field or a week writing an article on that. Um, it's really fabulous. Totally true. You can do what you said right at the start, just delete it and say, I'm going to do this, so whatever. You know, you, you get, it's, it's always kind of, it might, I just, the media is brilliant when the experts contribute, but when 
when anyone can contribute, you know, it's not as good. Well, there's no point in open source culture that yeah. relies on the idea of the greater good. Yeah. But obviously there are 10 million people writing articles from uh, Wikipedia, and of that, the greater good will go actually out of the yeah. It's it's crowdsourced. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. crowdsourced articles. So, so it's designed um, so everything has to be referenced. Like yeah. you can't just write facts that there aren't true. And if you do write facts and don't like them with a reference, they will get them. Yeah. If you're an expert, it's you should have the knowledge to be able to back them up. Mm. It's completely it's moderated. Where where the BBC though is, of course, things like Wikipedia, when you know what needs to be done. Yeah, there's oh, all yeah. of that. Well, like, if you're a journalist, you shouldn't necessarily use Wikipedia mm -hmm. as your reference. You should use the thing that Wikipedia gives as the reference So, but, but, so yeah. yes, there, there is the potential for Wikipedia to be wrong, but the fact that there's, there's one, you know, there's one person trying to, you know, write something which is wrong, he'll get overcrowded by the people who are, who are not wrong, and they'll say, well, no, you've got nothing to back this up on you. You know, we've actually found that this, this is, this article shows that this is true, and they will collaborate and, and say, well, this is, this is what goes. It's moderated, well moderated by, by the community, and, uh, and the, the kind of cooperative nature of Wikipedia. Um, uh, administrators and that sort of thing, and there are certain people who have particular rights on there that say, you know, this this is what goes and that sort of thing, and it, it works. You know, you look at Wikipedia, you could say, oh, that could just be lies, but it's not going to be. The same with source control. Oh, with source control, with open source, though, um, both Wikipedia and open source rely on philanthropy. That you, someone needs to support themselves, whereas if you're selling software or you know selling in Carter, you're making money. Off it. You, you can go and buy your bread and milk. Whereas, if, whereas it relies on sponsors. Wikipedia. It seems uh, to work, though. <laughs> yeah, it seems to work. So from the point of view of a contributor, there may be people who think, oh well, contributions should work like this or they work like that. From the perspective of the consumers, the people actually using Wikipedia, the people who are using Ubuntu, which is putting the entire free software. You know, it's a nice packaged up way to see that you can have a completely free OS. It seems to work and people yeah. use it. And, and the thing is, yeah. one, of, one, of things, one of the things Linus says as well is that um, uh, it, it, somebody asked him, what, you know, what can you kind of um, put down to the, the success of, of Linux? Because it's, it's a free and open source operating system, operating system basis and, um, and it's fucked into everything and it's used on every, you know, almost every website and, um, and a lot of people's personal computers and servers. And, um, and he said, one of the things he says is my selfishness. I wanted that thing to, to happen. I wanted that thing yeah. to work. And it's the same for all the other developers who contribute code. They, it's somebody, if I think, like, well, there isn't this thing, you know, I want a DVD burning software on, uh, this one's not particularly good or whatever, I'll write my own or I'll fork that one out. Well, that, because of my selfishness, I make it happen. And then somebody else, uh, every, well, so many other people else. Yeah, that's what I like as a developer sharing the stuff. But I can't live off open source, is what I'm saying. You can't. Uh, if you know, um, if you give it, no, if you're giving it away for free, I have a full-time job. Um, yeah, but that's because you're boss Yeah, because you're boss but you're not, you're not yeah. sharing your code. No, he works you're not for... giving away your code, are you? Oh uh, yeah. You are. Yes. Everything I do is made public. All right. Okay. I mean, I've, I don't know if you've already covered this because I've just wanted it. Uh, but Richard Stallman, who is a huge pioneer of, of yeah. open source and, and free source. Yeah. Yeah, uh, free software. Basically, he I saw him speak a couple of years ago, and the way he described it was. Uh, if you have free software, if all software is free, uh, software developers can earn money building custom software or building, uh, you know, like if a company wants a piece of software for its computers, it's perfectly reasonable for them to pay someone to do that. But you should have free operating systems, you should have free, you know, software for everyone. And then also there's things like support as well, like uh, you can provide custom support to people who are using the software. Like it, there's a whole kind of industry around software that isn't just writing the actual code. And if the code is free, everything else gets like more benefits from that. 
It's a bit like scientific discovery. So scientists dream of being published, and they're giving away the results of their research. Um, but there are, there's people who make money out of it. Yeah, people Pharmacists rely on scientific, yeah. scientific discoveries. We can't not pay scientists no, because uh, can't because they're not going to make money out of discovering gravity and so what's uh, and very doing the free software. I just saw free software as being, you know, if you're doing you doing still charge. Traffic. So, so I'm, I'm able to do my job as a, as a software developer, a web developer, uh, because free software is available. And that means if I can make websites for people, make software for people, aren't using free and open source software. And because I'm making it bespoke to them, they say, I want it to do this, this, and this. They could learn how to code and do it themselves, but they're not going to because they're you know, a manager or a salesman or something. I'm a developer who's learned, learned this, and I like, like doing that as a job. And I can provide that as a solution to them, which will help their business. that solution away to someone else? There are companies who do that and make money out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I can do, yeah, I can, I can take that and, and use it. It's basically a question of where the value is to be. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to yeah. figure out. Where yeah. The value yeah. is often that people aren't engineers so they don't understand how to, to put this stuff together. And they're happy to pay for it to be done. Can I just while the engineers are sharing well, the same problem. as. Um, it, it, it just, if you want to chip in, then I'll, yeah. I'll move on. So it, it means the end to the end user license agreement. If you pay a company X to make you some software, yeah. and they make it and you're 60% happy with it. If you've got an end user license agreement with them, you have to stay with them. Right. But if you want to go to somebody completely different, you've got their code and you go to company Y, and they carry on with what company X has done. So just because you've paid somebody to do it, doesn't mean you should be bound to their laptop. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just going to move on. So, um, <laughs> so the, the, you know, one of the problems with um, how using proprietary software, as well as the fact that you know you might pay a little bit to have you know, a license to use, say, Windows or MATLAB or whatever it is, if you're a you know, researcher and you're using MATLAB, uh, you know, and it's the best tool for the job, you know, great, whatever, you can use it, it's not cost you that much. If this happens a lot, I've got a friend who works at the University of Manchester, do, does a lot of the um, scientific research, um, helping with the programming, that sort of thing. If they say, right, I've made this simulation, it does this for a small case, I want to run it on you know, a million different cases. I need to you know, put it on the server and run it on a supercomputer. Uh, and, and run it, you know, a million, 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 million of times. I can't do that on my laptop, my little desktop mm -hmm. computer. They, they've, they've said, right, well, we'll you know, we've, they've given them licenses to use that software on their, on their own computer, their laptops. Uh, but if they wanted to pay to have it, like, you know, a load of supercomputers, it's going to cost the earth. They just can't possibly do that. With free software, if you know, if you'd written that in Python using scientific libraries available for Python. Um, he, he'd have be been able to do that. So, uh, um, so this is a couple of examples of people doing it wrong. So SciLab is a, it's not a, 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 an open source alternative to MATLAB, but a scientific, uh, scientific library. And they um, said SciLab is the open source platform for numerical computation. Uh, computation. Uh, and then they said in the, in the license, oh, but you're not allowed to distribute modified versions. So. They were just saying, oh, it's open source, but you can't, it's not really open source. So they said, don't make it wrong. Um, whenever you've seen it, if you haven't seen, uh, seen it in a headline, Microsoft reveals source code, I've seen this before. It's because, like, a course order has said you have to release the code so that people can de develop on your platform without being a Microsoft employee, because that need, they need to open the market up to, to allow developers to make different things. So, uh, so that's, that's how many times before. So, uh, there's a screenshot. Gitsum.com slash Microsoft for a book. So this is another cool thing. So it doesn't open source doesn't just mean software, so I'm really happy. So there's some open source cola. Uh, the recipe has been made and contributed to um, and improved over time. People can you can download the recipe and try and make it yourself uh, as a People they they actually sold like uh, five hundred thousand uh, cans of this stuff when they when they sort of made it. That's been a cool thing. And there's also uh, literal free beer. Um, so it was actually made on the strength of Richard Stallman going on about three years in free beer. And they, they said, well, let's make a, let's make a free beer. And uh, so they made the instructions, and it was some students or whatever else, and they, you know, they, they didn't, I don't think they did a particularly good job at first, but it, 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 over time they sort of um, they refined the recipe and people contributed ideas and that sort of thing and said, well, oh, we tried doing this, and oh, I tried this, and it worked really well. And it, it's, uh, that's what it put into common field when it was uh, GPR. Um, so there's a few factors, this is just finishing up now. Uh, a few factors for choosing software. So uh, 
Um, I'm, this, this presentation isn't human free software. I'm using, on a, I'm using Ubuntu on my laptop, but this, this isn't like LibreOffice or something. This is actually Google Drive presentations. So I chose this for convenience. So it's, it's, it's good quality, and it's, uh, it's easy to use, and it's, um, it's had a lot of benefits for me in that, in that respect. Uh, it, again, it cost nothing. It was free as in free beer. Um, but yeah, it was just the convenience of being, being able to do that in the web browser. Uh, so yeah, you, you all have a choice. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to say, you know, to say you're evil if you're using any proprietary software or anything like that. There are certain use cases that uh, it's definitely, definitely the way to go. Uh, so um, thanks for not leaving. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have you got any questions, chat up? If you, if you want to share your experiences with the software, quite quickly, I imagine. Tell each other over, Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.